O oh Lord, let there be mercy in this message and power in the proclamation. Amen. What is the meaning of Christmas? Maybe you came here tonight hoping to hear a message in the music, or perhaps in the liturgy, or maybe the sermon would shine some new light on what is the meaning of Christmas. Well, today, with the amazing technology of our time, anyone can type that question into the chat GPT, the new artificial intelligence it's a tool that can answer questions and write essays. So I tried typing in the theme of my sermon into chat GPT, what is the meaning of Christmas? And up popped a 500 word essay, essentially saying that the meaning of Christmas is the commemoration of the birth of Jesus Christ. I thought that was a pretty good answer for a bot but is it giving us enough? We already know that it's the day of Jesus Christ's birth, but please, tell us what it means. We need more, more depth. Maybe it's only a matter of time, but chatbots can't replace preachers quite yet. But Christmas is really about a story, a story of how our great and loving God empties his divinity into the form of a human being, a tiny newborn child, in order to give us freedom. This God decides to situate this birth in some out-of-the-way place and part of a huge, then unassailable empire. And the child grows up as a member of God's covenant people and as a teacher, exorcist, and healer invites his listeners into the fullness of God's love, one who ultimately is rejected, crucified, and raised from the dead. It's a great story, but there are many great stories out there to attract people, and Christianity has no monopoly on great stories. So why this one? Why tonight? This is the big story the story of God, the story of God's word. This is a story that speaks life into being. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God that first spoke creation into being. God flung this luminous web across the cosmos and the energy and light of God are revealed in that singular, vast network of relationships that animates everything that is. Then this almighty word deigns to become humble in order to connect with us. The word comes to dwell in humble flesh. So for us, the word literally comes alive. Imagine this night in a village outside of Kiev, where buildings nearby are being shelled and a tiny baby is born. Her Ukrainian parents have to huddle in the basement of their home with no access to CVS to get diapers or formula for their child. Yet they love their child. They rejoice in their baby's birth and they give their child the best they can in the middle of a war zone. Their joy is only possible when we consider that the grace of God allows us to hold the tension between the joys and the sorrows of life. But we have to have faith that grace and mercy of Christ are with us, and we will get through the battles of life that we face. If God chose to make his word flesh today, wouldn't it be more likely that he would choose a vulnerable family, very low on the economic totem pole? Just a mile or so away, an immigrant family does not have enough money for their weekly groceries, much less for buying presents for their kids, 
a hoped-for skateboard for their daughter or a soccer ball for their son. No Christmas tree either. Nearly one in four children across the state of Connecticut are part of an immigrant family facing financial hardship. When the teenagers of the house hear the doorbell ring, they run and hide, embarrassed to receive a Christmas dinner from the church. But they are hungry, and as soon as the stranger leaves, they are most grateful for the meal. How can we be like Mary, bearing the Christ, bearing the mercy and grace that overcomes suffering and even death? How, I wonder, do we give birth to Jesus Christ in our own lives? Richard Rohr says, most people's image of God is a jolly Santa making a list and checking it twice, finding out who's naughty or nice. It's certainly not this humble, helpless baby who has come to love us in ways that we're not ready to be loved. So Christmas is about something new, something new being born in us. Can Christ, the word of God, be born in our hearts, in our own flesh? Yes, he can, because of his deep compassion for each and every one of us. We may not experience poverty financially, but if we're honest about the poverty of our own spirits, God reaches us and blesses us and connects us to the eternal. As our relationship with God deepens, we find the capacity to be compassionate towards others. Isaiah the prophet predicts that the story, the story we hear tonight, will be a saving revelation for all who are able to hear it. Despite your suffering, whatever kind it is, he says, the word will be so comforting. It will bring joy, and so deep a joy, that it will cause us to break forth in singing. At Christmas, we sing especially gorgeous music in church as a way of expressing our highest joy. Where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. It really is a mystery how we find transformation within. It's an inbreaking of divine power our part is to be open to the word which longs to connect with us and to speak to us. I come, Jesus says, that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son and love came down at Christmas. And as some of us are beginning to say in this Episcopal church of ours, love always. We happen to live in a time when artificial intelligence has advanced to the amazing point where it can be directed to express the meaning of Christmas. But don't seek the meaning there, because I don't want you to be disappointed. Tonight, find your meaning and hope in the word which was from the beginning and which will be forevermore. This word is called Emmanuel, God with us. Tonight, God speaks through a son, and we sing in response. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. <laughs>